be able to understand the connection with Allah, you need to feel simmering hunger in your belly all the time. But we don't do that. The Prophet said, eat one third only. We eat complete and then we have to wait half an hour before we can move. That is unbelievable and unacceptable. So the question I have is, have we become a people, people who have learned to restrain? And have we become a people who are able to abstain? Have we become a people who have developed the conscience and the, uh, the appetite to be able to eat less? Are you contented with less food or do you eat so much more? In the month of Ramadan, all your fat should have been burnt out by now. Should have gone already. I did say and I made this promise to everybody before Jumaa, before uh, Ramadan began that I would lose one stone and I have to keep to my promise. I'm the one who's preaching here. If I don't practice what I preach, I'll be in trouble. I wake myself yesterday and I'll tell you I lost one stone, alhamdulillah. One stone already, alhamdulillah. I intend to keep it like this. And I feel already healthier inside. All the flags that I had in my body, I don't feel them anymore. I feel stronger, I feel leaner, and I feel healthy, alhamdulillah. I can concentrate in my prayer, and I can have few hours of sleep and be very content with it. Month of Ramadan is about losing that extra weight that you have. Month of Ramadan is about abstention, so you can eat less. Month of, month of Ramadan is about us having control of gluttony, the ones that did make you and I desire to eat more. Month of Ramadan is about not eating for our eyes, but eating when our stomachs are hungry. Some of us eat for our eyes so much that we can't eat and we can't move afterward. Drink the same or any other earthly desires have we been able to control. And if we have been able to control, inshallah, we have gained the best of Ramadan. And an important aspect of our abstention, and abstention as well as restraint, is in the month of Ramadan fulfilling our desires. It's a, it is perfectly halal for us to approach our wives or our wives to approach us is perfectly halal. But in the month of Ramadan, during the daytime, we don't approach them because you know Allah has made a very clear injunction in his examples. And of course Allah says, and stay away because in the month of Ramadan, you're learning to control. Rasul said, if you can give me a guarantee of two things that I can guarantee of heaven. One is what, between, what lies between your jaws, which is our tongue, and what lies between our leg, our private part. If we can guarantee also, this too, the Prophet said he can guarantee you and I heaven. What does he mean? We should not become enslaved by and driven by sexual desires 24-7. Some people are addicted to having sexual desires fulfilled. If that addiction has overtaken you, Ramadan was the best month to learn how to restrain. Ramadan was the best month how you and I should have learned to become cleaner, cleaner and purer. Though having sexual relationship with your wife isn't unclean, it's perfectly clean and it is a uh, sunnah from Rasulullah that we should enjoy it with the halal and that is our wife. A man came to Rasulullah and Rasulullah said, when you go to your wife and you fulfill your desire, you get reward for it. He said, oh, Allah, how is that possible? Why should I get reward for that? Rasulullah said, if you went to somebody who's not married to you, will you not be sinful? And he said, yes, yeah, so Allah, I'll be sinful. Rasulullah said, then every step of the way in reaching your wife, you get a uh, reward for it, subhanAllah. It is allowed that we learn to restrain, we learn to train ourselves. So that we are not like animals, but we have become human who are in control of their desires. So the second question is, have you learned to restrain? Have you learned to abstain? And if you haven't, the month of Ramadan is and has been a waste of time for you and for me. Third question, my brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you. In the month of Ramadan, while we don't eat and drink and we abstain from our sexual desires throughout the day, there is something else we do also in the month of Ramadan, and that is we control our tongue. We control our ears and we control our sight. We see no evil, we hear no evil, and we say no evil. Those three very powerful statements that I believe we should keep in our mind, forefront of our mind. We see no evil. Why do we not see any evil? Because seeing is directly connected to how our heart and our, heart, our mind would respond. The first thing you do is you look at me. You don't necessarily respond to the voice first only. You look at me and it's that looking at and seeing the gestures that make you connect. It's what make you, it make you understand. It's what makes you feel and move and inside you, either your emotion goes up or down. It's sight. And the first point of recognition is the sight. And if you start seeing the wrong thing, your heart will become desensitized. Your heart will become corrupted. Your heart will become infected. And your heart will be in trouble. And that disease that comes to their heart comes to their sight first. Are we and have we learned to control our eyes? Do we see wrong things? Has the television been on at home for you? I hope it hasn't. For me, television should not be on in the month of Ramadan. Well, some of you may complain, well, we will not be able to do the Islam channel. Well, unless Islam channel's problem, not mine. 
Well, I do programs on them, so it's a contradiction. No, wallahi, I think it's a waste of time and diversion watching television in the month of Ramadan or wasting uh, useless things. But of course, there are productive programs. You can listen to the Quran, you can listen to a talk that has been given. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about the channels that you and I so much love watching, wasting time. I went to a brother's house the other day and uh, he was watching uh, some uh, EastEnders in the evening after he had finished his iftar, he was relaxing. I said to him, brother, what are you doing? He goes, I'm watching EastEnders. I said, why? Why are you watching EastEnders? Well, it's time to chill out. I finished my fast. I said, but you're still in the month of Ramadan. The barakah of Ramadan is just going away. Switch it off. He looked at me, he goes, may I show? I said, switch it off. And he switched it off, alhamdulillah. I go to many houses. Throughout the whole day, TV is on, even in the month of Ramadan. Why? Why do you need TV on 24 hours a day? Why do you need so much noise to occupy your mind? Your mind needs to have peace. Your heart needs to find tranquility. And it is not by remembering those that you hear on television and, or, and you see on television that makes your heart become respondent to the, the, the nur of Allah, the light of Allah. It is something else. So have you began to restrain your eyes and have you started training your eyes to see the right thing? Have you stopped hearing the wrong thing? Have you stopped hearing the wrong thing? We infect our head and our hearts with all sorts of junk that we hear through our ears. Subhanallah, as if it's not enough. Muslims and non-Muslims and everyone alike in this modern world, they like junk into their head and their ear. They, they are not getting enough noise as if it's television on. If the television is not working, they've got an earphone in their head, listening to something through their iPods or anything else for that matter. If that's not working, they've got a mobile phone connected to their ear, ear. They've got Bluetooth, green tooth, many things coming out of their ears, subhanAllah. Why do you need so much noise? I wonder why brothers need to keep a, a piece of thing on their ear all the time. Allah hasn't made this ear to hold something on it. It is to be kept free so that you can hear the natural noise of the surrounding. If you need to answer your mobile phone, pick it up and answer, no problem. But why do you need to keep, why do you need to keep something stuck in your ear? What if somebody calls and miss the call? So what? If they need you, they'll leave a message. What is more important to you? The tranquility of your heart, cleanliness of your brain, or the junk going into your head all the time? Have you learned to restrain your ear? If somebody comes to gossip, you turn around and say, I don't listen to the gossip, my brother or my sister, for Allah Azza wa has made it haram for me. And I'm not going to listen to it, especially in the month of Ramadan. If they don't listen to you, put your finger in your ear and say, I'm not listening today. I'm not interested in gossip. I'm not interested in lie. I'm not interested in slander. I'm not interested in backbite. I'm not simply interested in things that cause me trouble in my heart and in my head. Whether it is to do with listening to the music that is regurgitated with filth and rubbish that comes out through the lyrics or to do with any other noise that comes to you. Note, and I have said, whether you listen to any songs or poetry or a lecture or an entertainment that's got nothing but filth and fahshai uh, munkar, shameful, and uh, all that Allah Azza wa Jal has said is indecent. Have you trained your ears? And finally, have you stopped using this tongue of ours? This tongue is very soft. It can say to somebody, I love you, and that's it. MashaAllah, a wonderful relationship begins. And it can say, I hate you, and a uh, beginning of an enmity that may last for years and years and years. This tongue is very soft, and yet it's the most powerful tool on the face of this earth. It's the tongue that makes or breaks. It's the tongue that is responsible for many wars in the world. It's the tongue that is responsible for many divorces in the world. It's the tongue that has broken up families, fathers from children and children from their families, and many and many more. If we are able to control our tongue, Wallahi, we'll be good people. When you're angry with you, just lash out with your tongue anything that comes out through your mouth. Do you think before you say, control your tongue in the month of Ramadan? For this is the importance of fasting in the month of Ramadan. If you have learned to restrain your tongue, you've learned to restrain your ear, you've learned to train as well as use your eyes for the right reasons. Third question was, how we began to control these three very important sensory items that we have in our bodies? Have we? And if we haven't, then we haven't gained much of Ramadan. Number four, in the month of Ramadan, we pray five times a day, inshallah. But has prayer become more meaningful to you? Has prayer become more meaningful to you? You're standing in prayer, do you just doing the motion because it's month of Ramadan? Or are you actually really standing in prayer? Are you having a conversation with Allah? Are you having a dialogue with Allah? Are you telling what Allah wants, Allah wants you to tell Him? Are you standing in prayer and thinking about what am I going to have for iftar? I know many people do. I park my car 10 seconds to go before I have to be finished quickly. Why is the Imam residing so long? <laughs> I've been told by people, brother, I parked my car in the wrong place, of course. Why did he do such a long surah? 